Hello everyone, I'm Fozzie, or Cam, and welcome to the Everything Podcast. I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Will. How are you doing today, Will? Doing great, Cam. Excited for the stuff that we're going to talk about today, and uh, kind of excited for a little later uh, conversation, which will be kind of a preview of something even bigger that we have next week that I'm just so excited about. So yeah, I'm doing great, and how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. So, today we have a little... It's a smaller agenda than we've had in the past few weeks, because think about it, we've had Wakanda Forever, we've had all those big D23 announcements during the summer, you know, this is kind of a mellow week, and we skipped you know, last week. Yeah, tell me what you think, Cam, but, but, but like, you know, there's like so much Marvel and Star Wars stuff coming out with like all the Star Wars shows, all the Marvel shows, all the Marvel movies, that... I that when I looked at like I looked at the calendar and I was like, oh my gosh, we might actually go like a month or two with like no Marvel or Star Wars content, and I, I was I just know. like, That's wow, I'm about. not used to this. So I'm like, wow, I'm gonna really push myself to see some other movies and stuff so we can have stuff to talk about on this podcast. I yeah. mean, I did see a. Uh, the Fableman, Steven Spielberg's yes. new film with my dad oh, last yeah. weekend. We so, talk about if that you, too, yeah, right? well, and yeah, and and once you see it, we could talk about that together in some yeah, we could go future episodes. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, try, and, yeah, you know, just just kind of, you know, find some other things to watch because Star Wars and Marvel is gonna be gone for a couple of months, and that just really like hit me because yeah. you're just not used to it with all the content that they put out. Well, do you know the exact date that Ahsoka airs? It, uh, no, is there like an official release date that's I'm not out? Sure. You know? I'm yeah, I don't sure. Yeah, I mean I, I I've just seen I've just seen that it's like coming out next year, but I didn't see like when it would be coming out all next right. year. So like the yeah, so the that's, earliest that's the thing that project. Yeah, the earliest thing that I know of actually is not until February. Ant Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Man the Wasp. Wow. One one Quantumania which Despite my, you know, thoughts on the first two yeah. films, I am very excited for I know. the Quantum Realm stuff. Quantum Realm visuals stunning. look stunning, stunning. As, as we've talked about on yeah. a previous podcast. So just the Quantum Realm stuff, I'm so excited to see that film, man. I really, really am. And to see more of the big bad of the entire multiverse saga, Kang the Conqueror, mm-hmm. how can I not be excited for that? Yeah, totally. Uh, so, well, I guess we do have some. Marvel content to end out this big Marvel rush we've had for the past few months with She-Hulk, uh, Wakanda Forever, and they top it the all I, The oh, and- I Am Groot shorts, Werewolf by Night, I get the Guardian <laughs> holiday special, I guess we're going to talk about that today, but just, yeah, as you're saying, just a rush of Marvel content. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's crazy how much, how, j- just how much stuff we've, we've gotten from Marvel. I mean, it, it's not. At first, I thought it would be a bad thing getting all this content, but it's fun. It, it's a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, like, e- even though I had an issue with n- now, I will. It, it, and you know, I'll save this for when we talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special during this podcast. I am not yet going to critique Marvel of these specials that they've come out with. Where will find that Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special? Because I believe they have found something here. And I'll get I'll get into that more in the Guardians of the Galaxy ho- holiday special when we talk about that. But even though I did have an issue with now like the number of TV shows Marvel's yeah. coming out with because of their poor quality, the specials and the movies. I still don't have anything yeah. to complain about with the exception of a few critiques, you know, you know, well, critiques that I had with Thor Love and, Th- with Thor, Love and Thunder. So I, but I still thought it was a solid movie. So I think, you know, the, t- the I think the TV shows, they've got some work, but in terms of the specials and the movies, I think Marvel's still in a great place. Yeah, totally. All right. So let's get talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. So it was fun. <laughs> Once again, fun. I mean, yeah. I, I truly think that's the word to just to describe it. I can't think of like any like no other word comes as immediately to my mind as that to 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 describe that thing. Yeah, the last few Marvel the last Marvel projects have just not been what I expected. She Hulk, I thought it was gonna be good. Uh, 
No Way Home. I thought, I didn't think it would be this insane blockbuster endgame level movie. I didn't think Multiverse of Madness would be as crazy as it was. I didn't think Scarlet Witch would be the main villain. I didn't think Thor Love and Thunder would be as middle of the line as it, as it is. But Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special is exactly what I thought it would be. And I'm very happy about that. That is that is a compliment. I mean, I, I, I am perfectly happy with the way the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special turned out. Yeah, same with me. It truly lived, you know, up to like the lived up to the way that it was billed. And I and um tell me if this is still your uh your uh, grade, but after it came out I um I saw your uh text to um to uh me and uh, some of our our, our uh, and uh some of our uh, other folks and and you gave it a seven out of ten, which I totally agree with. I just a seven out of ten, solid, fun, yep, ho- holiday special, which totally. me and with which me and both of my parents were able to watch. My mom does not watch Marvel things. Me and my dad watch them all together. But this was something for the whole family to watch, and that was something that I loved about this holiday special. And I, you know, really, you know, was uh, uh was appreciating what um. Uh, something I read that James Gunn said, and, you know, he talked about how this holiday special gave him the opportunity to, you know, introduce characters like, if I have it right, Cosmo the Space Dog, right? That's like yep, their, yeah. Cosmo. Yeah, and then also the Peter Mantis huge yeah, reveal. Wow. Um, I read an interview with James Gunn where he was saying that this holiday special gave him the chance to not have to introduce those concepts in, the, yeah. in, in those you know, characters and reveals in Guardians Volume 3, but have it all ready there and just, yeah. just be able to, you know, focus on the other things, Things you know, that the movie was about. So, you know, I I did not think this was just some throwaway, forget about it, pro- forget about it, Marvel project. This had a gigantic reveal in terms of Mantis being Peter Quill's sister. And I thought that they did a great job, not just, making it, you know, a fun holiday special, but that you forget about because it has nothing to to do with what's going on in the MCU. In the, in the MCU. No, they introduced a new character, Cosmo, and, and they had one of their biggest reveals ever, I would argue. So I truly believe, like, this is an absolute must-watch for anybody who is planning on seeing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Yeah, I guess year. it is, yeah. And the crazy thing is, this is... Well, Guardians 3 is going to be the last Marvel James Gunn film. Oh, and, and, well, now he's off at DC. I, he's I, like Kevin Feige you know. of DC. That's crazy. And I think he is one of the, if not the best, comic book director right now. Uh, the Suicide Squad, outstanding. Peacemaker Show, outstanding. And those are two different formats. It's it's crazy different. You have a, a full movie like Guardians of the Galaxy or The Suicide Squad. And then he has a he has a show called Peacemaker, which is another uh, DC project that he did, and it was just as good as his movies, if not better. It was, it's crazy, and it's cool that he, as a director, he was able to he's mastered both formats, you know, um, and and the special format he, with a holiday special, he 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 is the perfect p- perfect comic book movie director. Because he, he finds ways to put in some of that classic Marvel humor and kind of bring it up a notch, you know. Uh, bring it up from lazy, kind of kind of predictable jokes. And bring it up a notch to make it actually funny, you know. And especially his DC projects where he's allowed to go all out, like in the Suicide Squad. It, you know, he's a funny guy. He, he's very, he's a very funny writer he's a great writer great director so i'm happy for him i'm happy that he has this thing going on in dc but i am sad that he's leaving marvel yeah but yeah no i i just have nothing but respect for james gunn and and and, you know something that i appreciate about this uh, appreciated about this guardians of the galaxy holiday special i have already ranted about you know my disgust with how she hulk treated daredevil in that that is not the daredevil that i was used to he you know 
No Way Home, like, that was great, believable, daredevil humor, but, like, him being in a light project, like, She-Hulk, it was totally non-believable to me. Like, I, that was just not the Matt Murdock in the Daredevil that I knew and loved. What I loved about this holiday special was that, you know, the first two Guardians of the, the Galaxy films are already some of the more light, fun yeah. things that Marvel has done. So it's but they still not have just, some stakes. They still have some stakes right, in drama, right. you know? Very, very, which, which I think what makes them, you know, great, the, like, the the blend, but, like, you're not just taking, like, a character who's in these, these like, dark, gritty superhero movies and then doing, like, a light holiday special. No, like, I'm already used to those characters acting like that at times, so it was totally believable to me to yeah. put them into some, you know, really light, fun thing like the, like a Christmas ho holiday special. So I just loved how, like, believable it was. Like, it was, it wasn't like the characters acted any different than I'm used to them acting. Yeah. And, all right. You Did you watch the end credit scene? I did. did Rocket, With uh, Groot, I did. Did Rocket break the fourth wall? Did he? I think, I, wait. I think he, I think he did. I think possibly. He, yeah. He said we'll have to make another special. Yeah, that you're right. Weird. That was weird. That was really weird. I I don't, I don't think that would just be thrown out there for for nothing. I don't think they would do that without at least thinking about the fourth wall. I know it's it that was just an odd thing to do by James Gunn. I feel like well, Rockets have never really been established as a character who can break the fourth wall like Deadpool or Jennifer Walters. It's 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 really weird that they had him do that. But I don't know. But uh, I haven't like read about it much, so maybe I'll look up some theories online, you know, see what it's about. Sure, but yeah, no, yeah, that that definitely was, yeah, an interesting part of the uh end credit scene and let me ask you this, how do you feel about them waiting to reveal that Mantis is Peter Quill's sister until now and not just, like, do it or do it earlier? Like, what are your thoughts on that, and why do you think Mantis wouldn't have already told him? So, I think, I don't know. I think, well, the Guardians haven't had their own solo project since 2017. That was a while ago. And that was the same movie Mantis got introduced, and she didn't really know Quill. And it would have been kind of weird for that to be revealed in, like, an Avengers movie, like Endgame or Infinity War. That would, I mean, that would be kind of odd. Or if it was revealed in Thor Love and Thunder. So, I think they took the special as an opportunity to flesh out her character more and make it... Because we, we didn't, like, know a lot about her character before, and this special, I feel like, was kind of her, her, her special. And I think this was the perfect time to introduce them as brother and sister yeah and 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 i yeah it, and i think you yeah you said it really really well there and, and i saw a, a uh i saw a tweet from james gunn as well where he was talking about you know mantis is freed from you know ego and her whole life there and 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 that this was the first time for fans to truly see her as her real true self, so that was a great thing about this Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just really happy we got these specials, you know. They've all been really good. World by Night was outstanding. I've already met, I've already said that, but... Do yeah. You, do you know what the next special will be, Will? Uh, no, I don't. Do you? I have no clue. And I... I it better be good. It better be good, because... Yeah. It... it, it, it Gee, if if they, because they're trying to focus on the Disney Plus stuff, and they have two different formats, the TV shows and the specials, one of them has to be good. I mean, they still have it. They still have a chances to make the TV shows better. I mean, I feel like Logan they had a great division, not bad. They, shows. Yeah, they had a great first year in TV, and then just took a big step off this year because I think of the number of shows that they. That, that they came out with. They were able to have all this great stuff at first, but you're putting out so much that they tailed off this year. Yeah. yeah. And it, it is unfortunate, but I, they still have time to fix it with maybe Ag Agatha and the Coven of Chaos. Which yeah. Which I am most hyped for. 
Yeah, uh, I am very. And yeah. of course, Daredevil Born Again. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, extremely. Yeah, still have chances to up their television game. For sure, and we've got Secret Invasion next year, which I'm extremely yeah. excited for. And but you know, let's talk about this though. Marvel Studios has clearly found something in these specials, which are just about like forty to fifty minutes. Yeah, I think not, well, not a, a little not longer. a whole show, right? Just a special, and I wonder if just doing these these like one off, you know, forty minutes to an to an hour things is better than doing an entire season of like six to ten episodes. Like. I really feel like Marvel is finding a format of success with these specials, and I legitimately wonder if some shows might work better in a format like this, where it's a shorter yeah. thing, and you don't have to do, like, six to ten episodes. I was really worried about the amount of Marvel small screen content coming out, but I think they may have found a solve <laughs> to this riddle, and I think that they should look into transporting some of their shows into specials because it would be shorter and less work. I think that's something that they should consider because they've clearly found something here. We've had two really awesome Marvel specials this year. Yeah, I agree. And it's there are a few shows I think could be specials. I, I think Moon Knight had a lot to go over, but... They could have skipped through a lot of that, and I think it could have been a very, very good um, special if they used that stuff when he was in that asylum or when he when he died and all that. That would have been really cool and a special. Um, but Moon Knight also had a lot of stuff that I just feel like was really pointless, and they could have had the opportunity to just take that out, take all that fluff out, and just leave the good stuff in the TV show in the special. Um, but all the other things that Marvel has made uh, TV shows, I think they deserve to be TV shows. Uh, but, yeah. We both really enjoy the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. And yeah, I'm going to go, like, yeah, you know, all... all yeah, I, I, I'm i going to go, you know, 7 out of, seven out of 10. Just, just a fun thing for the whole family to watch. Um, Is that where you're still at, or what's your thoughts for your for your grade on this out of 10? I have a about that technical difficulty. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you are back though. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, uh try and get Cam back here. But uh, yeah, no. As I said, I, yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, seven out of ten. Letter grade for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Hall holiday special just just a fun thing for the whole family to watch and marvel truly needs to look into these more in my opinion because i thoroughly enjoyed um both of these um that have come out this year and in terms of the tv shows i think next year can be really telling in that if they have like a true issue with how many they're putting out because you know, as I said, like their last year, all the TV shows that, that 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 they came out with was great. This year, they took a step back. If they're able to take a step forward again next year with shows like Secret Invasion and Agatha Coven of Chaos, and continue to take a step forward again in 2024 with a show like Daredevil Born again, then I think we'll be able to relax as Marvel fans with the small screen content. But if they have another down year next year, and then it continues into 2024, and Daredevil Born Again is not what we think it what we think it'll be, you know, then I think we'll really be able to tell that Marvel needs to, you know, cut down on their, you know, small screen, you know, TV show content. You know, one one year of three subpar TV shows is one thing, but like two straight years, that's more telling. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Will. I feel like it's it's just crazy how how Marvel has gotten to a point that they they have all these shows, all these movies that that, that they're making like these canon television shows now. It's 
It's just crazy. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and really quick, just so uh, just so everybody can hear, out of ten, what's your grade for uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special? Out of ten, uh, my final grade is a seven, and around probably like a I agree. B B plus rating. I now. agree. Yeah, and like you know, this like 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 you know, there are like you know some. You know, like, you know, things like a Thor Love and Thunder where I may talk about it along these lines, but it'll be in, you know, at times more of a negative way. No, 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 no. This is as positive, like a B 7 out of 10 grade as you could give. We're just praising it as just a fun, solid holiday special. So, like, we don't mean, or at least I don't mean like, like, you know, like the the B or the 7 out of 10 in a bad way. Of course. Like, yeah. you know, like, you know, some things may be like a B and it's meant to critique. This is not. This is a B and a, and a 7 out of 10 in a positive light and not a negative light. Yeah, I, I feel the same as you, Will. Uh, but now, let's talk about the NBA, Will. We haven't done that in a while. Um, My Celtics, Will, I am very happy right now. I am very happy happy i talk about what you know they're 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 the best team in the nba when you look at all the rankings from yeah, you know es it's, it's from crazy. from espn and stuff maybe and they, Doko is holding them back well you know i don't think i wouldn't say that because they made it to the finals but that, i think that's without true. But they question the middle, they struggled at, at the beginning of the true, year last that year. is that is very true but i think without question the thing that is most impressive about the Celtics this this year they had the report about Ime Udoka come out literally like right right before the season like I think like the week before they were about to start training camp or something like like that so they had to go into training camp with this whole burden Joe Missoula has never been a head coach before and they haven't missed a beat they're playing yeah, at the it's, level it's at the, at the, they're playing at, at the level they were playing at in the playoffs last year and maybe even better jason tatum is a top five player in the nba right now he's an mvp can't 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 candidate and um ime udoka and that whole transition from him to joel to joe bazula at the forefront makes me nothing short of really just amazed honest Honestly, at the Celtics' start to the season, it's nothing against the talent on their team, but with the circumstances that they had to go through for them to be out here and have the best record in the NBA like this, I'm phenomenally impressed. Yeah, so am I. It, I I'm just really, really happy that we have another good team this year, you know? That's, that's all I have to say. Yeah, and, you know, tell me if you agree. Like, like I feel like, you know, like, the amazing thing about this, like, you know, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, era Boston, set Boston Celtics, is that, you know, Tatum and Brown are, you know, still young. They're in their 20s, and yet this team is pinned to, like, something like four of the last five Eastern Conference finals. They've been to the finals last year. To me, at least, it feels like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been around a while, and yet they're still so young. And that's why yeah, Celtics it's, fans yeah, should be I, so I excited about you, it's crazy. the future of this squad. They're just going to keep getting better and better and better. And they're going to be a playoff team under Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for a long, long time going on deep runs and chasing titles. Yeah, I, I'm just really happy that that my team has been able to be so good, you know. It hasn't always been that way, Well, I mean, when we had Kyrie... It was a struggle, you know. Oh my gosh! Let's talk about Kyrie Irving. Oh man! In we the Brooklyn Nets so far this NBA season, I mean, I know he's done things, and he and he and, he, and he's like, I guess, like a apologized and said that he was wrong. Like the the most unsportsmanlike person yeah. in all of sports. I am so disgusted by that man, and. The Brooklyn Nets lost to the Philadelphia 76ers recently. So telling about how not together that team is. I mean, just talk about, really, just an embarrassment of a basketball team that invests their money in these selfish superstar 
players. If they could just get their act together, they could be right up there with the Celtics. But no, their their stars are selfish. They, they're they are clearly not a tight team. The Nets are a disgrace to basketball, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's they could have been so nasty too, Will, if they just put their egos aside. <laughs> You know, it is so true. You're you're so spot on there. And I'm like, you know, Kevin Durant as a Warriors fan, I understand like I well, I don't want to understand, but I guess I get you wanting to go out and prove that you could win a title by yourself. But wouldn't you rather be out here with the Warriors of this great culture than around Kyrie Irving and this, I know especially uh, last year you guys said next won the finals best. yeah and look I'm sorry to Kevin Durant can you still make the argument that he's the best player in the NBA when healthy and when, when he's playing at a elite level sure but when the Warriors win not just one championship but two championships without Kevin Durant that makes it much more clear that, you know, he was able to be put in a situation with the Warriors. You know, was he the best player on that team? Sure, but he was also put in a situation where he could be surrounded by all these other great players and, you know, be able to have not a lot of pressure on him. So I think it's becoming more and more obvious that even if Kevin Durant was the best player on the Warriors 2017 and 2018 championship teams... He was put in a situation where it was very easy for him to be that. And he hasn't won a title without the Golden State Warriors. And I'm sorry, but facts are facts. And those are the facts right now about KD. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And it, he should have once again put his ego aside and stayed with the Warriors because he'd have another ring. Yeah. And uh, by the way, Kim, uh, uh Tell me what you think, but um, if not, I think December 10th is the first Warriors-Celtics game of this season. Um, You know, um, the Warriors and Celtics in the finals might never happen again for us in our lifetime. So I was thinking maybe for at least one of their regular season games this year, because I, I think their game on December 10th is a Saturday weekend game. I feel like for at least one of their regular season games this year, we should do what we did back in the finals and do a live stream and stuff because it is just so fun to be able yeah, to it is. provide our fans with, you know, the fact that we, you know, root for two different teams on two different coasts. So I, I, I think for at least one of the Warriors Celtics games this season, we should try and do some of those uh, live, some of those live streams again. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Totally. That'd be awesome. Uh, but yeah, now we have to move on to, Will, what you were really excited for today. Avatar in the Way of Water needs to I'm be the like, second you... highest grossing movie of all time to Ooh. just to just make money. That is insane, Will. That is crazy. It is crazy insane, and the COVID pandemic doesn't help them, but this is also the sequel to the highest grossing, you know, movie yep. of all time with probably the best visuals I've ever seen in my life and very gripping trailers story-wise so far. So if there's anybody that can do it, it's James Cameron and this Avatar team, but talk about pressure. Yeah, it, it's 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 insane. Yeah, I can't believe a sequel even got made. By the way, I know James really Cameron, why I know James Cameron really wanted to do it, but I, I, Avatar that could have been one and done, man. I feel like the amount of uh, if I were James Cameron, I'd I'd take what I got. Just made quickly made the highest grossing movie of all time, and that's it. Enough with uh, Avatar: Way of Water. Uh, no, nope, we're not doing that. We're not doing Avatar: Way of Water. No sequels. But here he is. He's very he's dedicated to his craft, which I can admire. You know. Yeah, and 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 all of the trailers that have that have come out so far, I at least have 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 found them epic in every sense of the word, and I am just extremely excited for this movie. I do believe that James. Cameron said that, like, you know, like, you know, he'd be, like, you know, willing and stuff to, like, you know, not do, like, in Avatar 2 or 
Avatar 3 and future sequels if this film doesn't do well in, in the box office and people aren't as excited to see Avatar anymore. But I have no reason to not believe that this movie will not make a ton of money. And I am extremely excited for it. And, um, you know, uh, tell me, like, you know, you can speak on your thoughts on the, you know, three, hour, uh, three hours Ugh. and 12 minutes runtime but you know i just want it to be good and if it's good then i don't care yeah so here's the thing i like a good at the most if it's a really good movie i like a two hour and 30 minute runtime the one exception maybe to that rule that i've seen so far is batman maybe and game Irishman. I mean, those are all three great movies. I mean, three hours and 12 minutes for an Avatar movie. That will, that's crazy. So I also think that for Avatar Way of Water, it was kind of a dumb maneuver to release it so late, obviously, after the sequel in 2000, the original in 2009. Uh, this is quite a few years after that, Will, <laughs> and I I think that was a mistake on uh, James Cameron's part. And I know he had to really? wait for really? he had to wait for new technology to be invented, which is ridiculous. That's insane, Will. But do I think it was worth it? And I I don't because it just doesn't have as much excitement towards it. It doesn't have as much hype, you know. Do you? Do you do you not think, folks? And I in I include myself in this. Like, do do you not think this will be one of the biggest movies of the year? I mean, this is this is the sequel to the highest grossing movie of all time, of all time. Yeah, I really don't think it'll be. I I just don't think really. Wow. The, I don't think it will hit the general audience the same as the first Avatar did. I just feel like it doesn't have the build up. It doesn't have the hype. And I just don't think it will be anywhere near the first Avatar. And that's... I don't see why not with these trailers coming out. I see no drop-off in terms of visuals or epicness to me. Yeah, I know. It's just... We'll, we'll have to wait and see, Will. You know? <laughs> At the end of the day, it all comes down to if the movie's actually good or not, you know? Yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I mean, I actually do think there is a benefit to not just rushing to make a new thing i think when you give yourself more time it can actually give you a chance to make a better quality product and i think we have a a chance to see this here with um avatar the way of water and 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 look you know i said this earlier with the with the three hour and 12 minute runtime and i'm gonna also say it you know um with this, like, you know, I don't care how long, you, you know, um, it, or how much time there is between Avatar and Avatar The Way of Water, as long as both movies are good. And I don't see any reason why that won't be the case. I mean, I saw the first, uh, I saw the re-release of the first movie on the big, on the, on the big screen in 3D a couple months back. I... I thought it was obviously epic, like most visually stunning thing that I've ever seen. I wouldn't change one thing about it story-wise, and I see no drop-off as of yet from these trailers that have come out for Avatar The Way of Water. So yeah, no, I mean, I don't I don't care about the amount of time in between films, just as long as this one's good, which I think it will absolutely be. All right, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And by the way, folks, we will have a very in-depth episode oh, yeah. next podcast on the first Avatar. Because I feel like we said it before, Will. It, it totally deserves its, not its own episode, but a very large portion of an episode on Avatar. Oh, if you're the highest grossing movie of all time, you totally deserve that. Now, if you were the highest grossing movie of all time and you weren't a great movie would i be as excited to talk about you no but with avatar that is most certainly not the case i loved the first film and that's why i'm so excited to talk about it with you next week i think it'll be a big big everything podcast episode yeah and now to 
kind of top off this episode, just like to talk about a few things I've seen recently. I watched, um, well, haven't watched it yet, because it's coming out Friday, I believe, and I'll probably check it out Friday. Violent Night. The most insane movie I have ever heard of in my entire life. I, I just did not expect this to happen. I mean... David Harbour as Santa Claus in an action movie directed by the same people who made John Wick. That's insane. Well, I never, I've never thought I, 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 I'd say that. I never thought I'd say that sentence. That's crazy, and I'm happy. I, 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 I'm, I'm really happy that this is being made. It's a fun action movie. And the last one of those that's came out is probably Bullet Train. I mean, Bullet Train, granted, didn't have as wacky of a premise, and I thought Bullet Train was a really good movie, actually. Um, but Violent Night, I think it'll just be a load of fun. A lot of good humor, I bet. A lot of great action, which, from the early reviews, I pretty much seen is in the movie, so... That's what I want, and that's what it looks like I'm getting. So I'm yeah, really happy about that. Yeah, and I see a, a solid 6.9 out of 10 IMDb, a solid 72% on Rotten yeah. to, on Rotten Tomatoes. And I think I'm going to go and see this, you know, well, for one, as I said earlier, to give us stuff to talk about on this uh, podcast without Marvel and Star Wars out. I, you know, that'll give us a chance to bring some more music into the show as well which i know you uh enjoy doing but uh you know um you know uh you, you know to give us you know some more things to talk about but you know mostly probably by just pure enjoyment of david harbour the actor is going to join me is is going to draw me to this film because in black widow he's great and in and in stranger things he's exceptional yeah I 100% agree with you, Will. Next movie I want to talk about that I plan on seeing is Glass Onion, the sequel to Knives Out, which I am really excited for because Knives Out is one of my favorite movies of all time, and at one point it was my favorite movie of all time. I just think Ryan Johnson is a good director, you know? I Absolutely. As much as I don't like Last Jedi... Oh, boy. I think I I think that might even be an understatement for you. And I I just I I've been so impressed with Knives Out and from the trailers of Glass Onion that I've seen. I'm excited for that too. But the thing with Glass Onion is, is that it's a Netflix release, and I would have liked to see it in theaters, but it's only in like a few theaters, and there are what the closest one to me is still really far. And it's an AMC theater. Yeah. And I don't really do AMC. And uh, I, I just just wish they... I just wish it was a wide-release film. I wish it was just released at every movie theater because that might make more money. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and there are a few Netflix films, right, that might get, like, a short theater run, right? Like, are there yeah. some that get that? I think, yeah, like, I that, heard but, of that for think some, about it. For some the, Netflix I, The films. Irishman. The Irishman. That was... A Netflix film, and that was directed by Martin Scorsese, and that had a had a lot of theater releases. It went to smaller theaters, you know. The Last Sunday is not going to do that, and I have heard some people say that if everyone goes and sees sees this movie in theaters, they might be tempted to keep it out in theaters and keep keep it out in the theaters longer, you know. But that doesn't still doesn't matter to me because it won't be in a theater close close to me, you know. And I could just wait till December twenty third to watch it on Netflix, you know. Yeah, for uh, for sure, for sure. And uh, yeah, I lost track of what I was gonna say. So fire away with your next uh, thought, Cam. Uh, finally, Cabinet of Curiosities, a show I just started today. Uh, with I believe, well, not I believe, I know Guillermo. Guillermo. Guillermo del Toro. I did not say that right. I guarantee I did not say that right. Um, he directed all the episodes, and I believe he wrote them as well. And 
it's a show where each episode has a different story, uh, and it's really good so far. Uh, awesome. Yeah, they're just all horror movie stories. They're about an hour long. They're like a special length, and they're eight episodes. So, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on that. And Tulsa King, episode I've watched episode three, uh, which was great. I think Tulsa King is an outstanding show. And I don't know why like more people aren't talking about it, because it's Sylvester Stallone, and he's a gangster. That's what, what, else, what else could you ask for? But yeah, yeah, I think that about tops off this episode. Mm-hmm. And for the fable, the fableman, um, I probably will see that when it comes out to streaming. I don't think I'll watch that one in the movie theater, but yeah, when- but but like once you see it, I would yeah, I would love to uh, talk about it. Uh, yeah, talk about it uh, on this uh, podcast for sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that sounds good to me. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. Sorry for that little bit of technical difficulties there. Uh, But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.